an expert on the inner workings of Camino, was a young bounty hunter named Boba Fett. They'll do. History of Boba Fett. There's more than enough scum and villainy in the Star Wars universe to go around. And if you're a dedicated bounty hunter, there are plenty of chances to make your mark in a galaxy far, far away. The Galactic Empire is filled to the brim with rogues, crime lords, and strongmen. But there's one name that strikes fear into renegades across all the known star systems. Boba Fett, the fierce Mandalorian. He's known far and wide as the best bounty hunter in the galaxy, and he's got the Wookiee scalps to prove it. Though his presence in the Star Wars movies amounts to less than 10 minutes in total, Boba Fett has been a favorite with fans for decades. Today, we're going to break down the complete history of Boba Fett. But before we continue, make sure to hit the like, subscribe, and ring the bell to always be updated. Here we go! The story of Jango Fett, his father, before Boba, there was another Fett that brought fear into the hearts of bounties throughout the Star Wars galaxy. Jango Fett was a legend in his own time, who, like Din Djarin, was a foundling. Jango fought alongside a group called the True Mandalorians, a rival faction of the Death Watch, during the Mandalorian Civil War, also known as the Great Clan Wars. This may explain why he was so unceremoniously dismissed by Judge Satine's right hand, Prime Minister Almec, during an investigation by Obi-Wan Kenobi. Jango left the Mandalore system and used his warrior skills as a bounty hunter. His track record eventually caught the attention of Darth Tyrannus, aka Count Dooku, who wanted to solicit the bounty hunter for a special project. Specifically, he was chosen to be the template for a clone army of the Grand Republic. Jango accepted the offer in exchange for a kingly fee and a special request. As it turned out, that request would be for the Camionians to make an unaltered clone. Jango named this clone child Boba and raised him as a son. The question of whether Boba was considered a Mandalorian was a bit complicated, even though being a Mandalorian wasn't based on a specific race or species, but rather a creed. Boba was raised under the Super Commando Codex that its founder, Jaster Mareel, has passed on to Jango and the other foundlings, slash Mandos of the true Mandalorians. Boba Fett became an orphan during the opening battle of the Clone Wars on Geonosis after Jango was struck down by the legendary Jedi Master Mace Windu. This traumatic event would instill hatred for the Jedi that Boba held well into adulthood. Although unconfirmed, it's possible that the braids he wore as a trophy around his shoulder may have once belonged to Jedi he hunted down following Order 66, although others believe there are Wookiee scalps. What is known was that his first foray into hunting their target came to do an assassination mission against the same Jedi who killed his father. The early years, following his failed attempt to avenge his father, Boba entered into a bounty hunting apprenticeship under the guidance of Aurora Singh. The irony was that Singh herself was a Force sensitive who had once trained under the Jedi Master Ki Adi Mundi before circumstances led to her separation from the Jedi Order. Boba's early years as a bounty hunter in training were marked with as many losses as there were successes. Besides his early failure with assassinating Mace Windu, his most humiliating defeat came when he and a cadre of other bounty hunters were hired to deliver a mysterious package to the corrupt ruler of the heavily pressurized planet, Quartzite. On the way to a tool blank stronghold, Boba and his convoy were attacked by a group of masked rebels called the Cage Warriors that sought to take the package. The package was later revealed to be Pluma Sodi, a princess who had been kidnapped and was to be delivered to the tyrant who wanted to make him his young bride. The Sith apprentice turned bounty hunter, Asajj Ventress, betrayed Boba after a code of honor led her to side with the rebels and free the princess. Boba fought Ventress over the princess, but was defeated, and bound inside the chest that was delivered to the dumb-stricken dictator. Boba eventually grew into his own and began to wear his father's armor which he repainted in colors that honored the former Fett's memory. His rise to the top of the Bounty Hunters Guild led to the conflict with Cad Bane, who was the predominant bounty hunter during the Clone Wars era. Even though Boba emerged the victor in this fatal showdown, he was left with a souvenir from this encounter, the dent that embedded his nigh-impenetrable Beskar helmet, Vader's right-hand man. During the time of the Galactic Civil War between the Rebel Alliance and the Galactic Empire, Boba Fett was in high demand as one of the greatest bounty hunters in the known galaxy. His most frequent employers during his timetable were Jabba the Hutt of Tatooine, and the Emperor's Fist, Darth Vader. As a matter of fact, Boba became such a frequent contractee of the Empire that he earned the moniker of Vader's right hand. He also earned a reputation for disintegrating his bounties. One of the earliest contracts that Boba Fett had in service to the Dark Lord was an undercover mission on the Pana Moon, Pana Prime. It is here that he had his first encounter with the rebel heroes, Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia Organa, Han Solo, and Chewbacca. Although he posed as an ally, Fett's true nature was revealed thanks to the help of R2-D2 and C-3PO. A second encounter with Luke Skywalker occurred later on, after Darth Vader hired Boba to uncover the identity of the rebel hero who destroyed the first Death Star. Luke barely survived this ambush at Obi-Wan's home on Tatooine, except for some help from R2-D2. Even though Boba failed to capture Luke, he did succeed in gaining the information his employers sought to know. The name of Vader's young nemesis, Skywalker. 
Bobo's greatest victory during his service to Jabba the Hutt was the capture of the smuggler turned rebel ally, Han Solo. Jabba had held a bounty on the former smuggler's head, since the latter dumped a load of spice that belonged to the Hutt. Fett wasn't too thrilled with Darth Vader's decision to use Solo as a proxy, to test the carbonate freezing process he intended to use later on Luke Skywalker. His fearless statement, He's no good to me dead, was a brazenness offered to virtually no one outside of the Emperor and the Grand Moff Tarkin. The fact that he wasn't forced choked for saying this was a testament to the respect that Fett had earned for his prowess. A bitter end? Or is it? Bubba's greatest victory preceded what would later become his worst defeat. After bringing back the carbonite frozen Han Solo to Jabba the Hutt, Fett decided to remain at the Crime Lord's palace on Tatooine. Fett's cushy day job of protecting the gangster slug while enjoying the palace entertainment was cut short. Following the arrival of Luke Skywalker, Skywalker enraged the Hutt after he defied all odds and not only survived being cast into the deadly Rancor pit, but slew the Crime Lord's pet as well. Jabba decided to extract the most excruciating punishment he could think of upon Luke, Han, and Chewbacca by having them escorted to the infamous Great Pit of Carcoon, where they would be fed to the insatiable Sarlacc. Fortunately, Luke had prepared for such an event, thanks to some inside help from his trustworthy astromech, R2-D2, and Lando Carissian who had been poisoned as one of Jabba's guards. During the ensuing chaos aboard the Executioner's Barge, Boba Fett was struck from behind by a blind hand solo. Fett's jetpack malfunctioned and the bounty hunter flew wildly out of control, where he then bounced off of Jabba the Hutt's yacht, the Katana, before tumbling down into the belly of the beast below. For most, being swallowed by the Sarlacc would have been a bitter, slow, and torturous end. But Boba Fett wasn't just anyone. He was a Mando aide, child of Mandalore, and Mandalorians were definitely resistant. Back from the dead, this unknown stranger who bore an uncanny resemblance to the clones of the Grand Republic followed Darjin to the Jedi homeworld of Tython. While Grogu, Djarin's Jedi foundling, was using the Sea and Stone to make a connection with one of his people, a suspicious ship appeared. Although unknown to Djarin, this ship was the same one that belonged to Jango Fett and later his son, Boba. And as he observed closer, a black-robed figure with a hood pulled up emerged. Djarin approached the stranger, but was stopped by a sudden burst of blaster fire from above. Djarin eyed the stranger and asked if he was a Jedi, on account of his similar attire. The man pulled down his hood, revealing a scarred visage. Fennec Shand, the bounty hunter that Djarin had previously crossed paths with on Tatooine, revealed the stranger's name. He was Boba Fett. Boba had survived the Sarlacc. Sometime following the Battle of Endor, the bounty hunter escaped from the belly of the beast a feat that have never been recorded before in galactic history. His victory came at a heavy cost though. First, his face and presumably his entire body were covered in scars. Next, he had been stripped of his iconic armor. The first of these costs came logically from the digestive acids of the Sarlacc penetrating the unprotected areas of his body. Then again, perhaps they were old war wounds accumulated through years of tracking down bounties. As for the loss of his armor, one possible theory for this was that Jawas had found his unconscious body, and being the scavenging buzzers that they are, stripped his body of its valuable Baskar Gam. To his fortune, Bubba was then discovered by one of the Sand People's clans and nursed back to health. That was all for today, guys. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button, and ring the notification bell to be notified first when a new cool video like this comes out. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.